All right, man, check this out. Make sure you subscribe to the page. Hit the thumbs up button if you like the content. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, man. Last night was crazy. Uh, shout out to uh, everybody that's up this morning, early this morning with me. Um, I know I'm here every morning with y'all. Uh, today, I'm feeling kind of good. Um, so I want to talk about something that Corday said about uh, Kendrick Lamar and Drake battle being phenomenal. And I have a lot to say on this issue um, because he said some things that was interesting. So before I get into that, you know, I got to get my legendary spill. This is Torture Talk, the 8 a.m. show. Good morning. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. If you're new here, let me work for your subscription today. All the beautiful, sexy ladies, but one in the chat. Single ladies, but one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones that just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, links is on the screen right here. Cash at PayPal is in the description. They call me the Hidden Gym. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over 1,000 subscribers. And let me know where you're from. I really appreciate it. So, look, we're going to get into this clip, man. Uh, and we'll be back to discuss... All right, this comes courtesy of The Ville. You know we like The Ville over here. So let's get it. Because Corday did an interview, and I found something that he said in the interview very interesting, something that we had talked about on this channel as well. So I just wanted to dig into that and just get into the conversation about what he was talking about when they interviewed him. You see, Corday had a conversation about the Kendrick Lamar and Drake battle. But one thing that he took away from the whole scenario, and they quoted him here, it was so phenomenal for hip hop music needed that you got these streamers reacting and reading rap genius that was not happening before that was power. Now that's absolutely true. I was saying that in the previous videos that this battle, although I believe it took the air out the room, it also put people back up on lyrics. And it's, it's, it's crazy to say that when it comes to Drake, because he doesn't really write none of his stuff. But when he raps, he raps. And it's crazy to see that lyrics kind of came back through a battle between two of the top guys in, in the space of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? So this is this is pretty unprecedented. I mean, this is something that I think we should actually admire because we don't know how long this is going to last. So we got to we have to cherish this moment, you know? Powerful. That was something that I was talking about before, bro, how lyricism is starting to become the most important thing in hip hop these days. When you have streamers reacting and people reading Rap Genius and the way that Corday emphasizes how nobody was doing that before, none of that was happening, is very true, bro. It became very stale. It became very friendly. So I want to say this, and I want and, and, and I have to say this because I know a lot of people don't don't really, you know, I guess don't want to admit it. But this is all because of Kendrick. When Kendrick Lamar dropped uh, Not Like Us, first of all, it started Not Like Us. I mean, not like, not, not like, not, not like us, uh, like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. It started, like that started the mystery because it was a hidden, his, he had a hidden verse on the album. You know what I'm saying? So when Kendrick dropped that verse, people started to pay attention, especially the one in the line where he said, uh, for all your dogs getting buried, it's okay with all these nines, you're going to see Pet Cemetery. And people connected, okay, nah, he obviously knew he was talking about J. Cole and Drake, but he started to open the door for people to start reading into lyrics. And then Drake came with push-ups. He was a little more direct. You know what I'm saying? Then Taylor May freestyle, still working around that working around those lyrics 
but then Euphoria came. And once you, when Drake said, and, and I got to give Drake some credit too, when he said, you better come with a triple, a triple quadruple entendre, basically saying like, yeah, you better come with some crazy lyrics because uh, you about to wake the demon up or whatever, right? When Kendrick came with Euphoria, that's when it opened the floodgates because that song alone has so many hidden meanings. Every, it was everywhere. There's so many different things you can pull from that song. And then when he dropped 616, so many more hidden meanings than Meet the Grams and Not Like Us and Not Like Us music video and all this stuff. It, it's all because of Kendrick. Let's be clear here. Kendrick Lamar is the reason why people are going to Rap Genius. Drake had a little piece to, piece to do with it. J. Cole, Drake, a little piece. But Kendrick is the, the full on, full on, 90% of the reason why everybody's going to rap genius, Kendrick Lamar. That was something that he talked about in this interview. It was super friendly. It was, it was like you almost hated to have somebody beef with each other or have any type of um, confrontation, you know, buddy, buddy type, type of deal, you know, and like, where's the competitiveness? Where is the competitive, where is the competitive drive that artists usually have when it comes to being number one, I think because of that, I'm not saying that I want people to beef. I'm just saying you got to have some type of adversary. You got to have some type of friendly rivalry, a friendly fade that always seems to be coming up in the conversation. It should have stayed that way. Should have kept it that way. Now, I agree 100%, bro. There's a lot of subgenres in rap. You got drill, you got conscious rap. You have lyricism. And these days, lyricism has become the priority in hip hop. Yeah. Now, I will say this. Most of the reason why lyricism has become the priority is because most people are tired of a lot of these, a lot of airhead rap. They tired of straight to the point rap. They want to feel like they're getting their money's worth, like their value out of the music they're listening to. People want more for their money. And if you drop an album where they can research it and read into it, I think people are starting to like stuff like that. They're starting to like that they could go down these rabbit holes and look for these things. They don't just want a, a rap album that's just straight to the point now. You know what I'm saying? And I think we are at a turning point in hip-hop that's actually going to do something different for a lot of people. You'll see hasn't been like that in a very long time a lot of times when you hear a song a lot of times when you listen to a song in the past years it was really about the beat it was really about the flow melodic sound now all of that is still good but lyrics lyricism is topping every single one of the categories in hip-hop subgenres. so you could make trap music you can make all this experimental music yeah, and another thing, uh, Corday he understands lyrics. He's a, he's a pretty good lyricist himself, and I think him being a young man and being a, a good lyricist the way he is, I think that he takes some inspiration from people who are you know that's been uh, good with lyrics. So he understands the whole dynamic between beyond lyrics. I think a lot of these young uh, artists they don't really know too much about lyrics. They just rap, and they think they got a little punchline here, a little punchline there, but there's really nothing to look into, no double entendres. It's mostly metaphor-based, mostly uh, similes, like and as, like, oh, I'm like this, or I'm as that, or something like that. Not really digging deep to with words that, uh, like two or three words that can actually feel like you just listen to somebody speak a whole conversation to you off of two or three words, the way they place them together. You know what I'm saying? Because there's so many layers behind the words. So let's keep going. The one thing that people are definitely going to listen to now is the message in the song, the lyrics in the song, the things that people are saying. What are people saying? You know, and it was funny because when we had the conversation about Abso dropping Squeeze First 2 and people were alluding to the fact there was speculation that 
Could he have been dissing J. Cole? Abso could have dropped that song, what, like five years ago, two years ago, and nobody would have cared about what he had to say. Nobody would have tried to piece it together and see if it meant something to this and did it correlate with that? No, nobody would have ever done that, bro. Nobody would have ever done any of those. Realistically, lyricism had been underappreciated for a very long time. And now, because lyricism is being taken more seriously, people are deep diving and diving and looking for the answers and trying to see and trying to connect what this means and if it means this to that person and if that person is beefing with so and so it's a lot of things that are happening now that weren't happening before that's true that's absolutely true i think a lot of people before were they were kind of like in a space where they didn't really know where and what to actually think and they were just accepting anything because it was so many people putting out music but if you know, if you have y'all noticed that there's not really a lot of music coming out. I mean, I know there was just a whole big drop that happened on Friday, but for the most part, a lot of rappers are not, a lot of rappers are not dropping music. I don't know why that is. I don't know if the le- the record labels are holding their projects back or something. I have no idea. But I'm just saying, like, as far as like a lot of hip hop artists, they're not really dropping no more music like that. And I think that the reason why is because a lot of people are flopping because they don't have no messaging behind their music. A lot of people doing this, just doing music just to do it. And people are, I believe people are kind of tired of it. People are kind of tired of it. Like people want more than what, what these rappers and these artists are giving them. They want more. They want, they want you to actually be a complete artist. They want something that is worthwhile listening to. And on top of that can make them think. Because a lot of people, if they, I guess people are feeling like a lot of these artists think that they could just throw anything at them. Like they're just a bunch of airheads. It's like, oh, they'll like this bop. And it's like, really? Like, is it just about a bop? Or, I mean, do you have something else to speak on? Do you have something else to say? A lot of people are tapping into the lyrics, looking up the lyrics in the song, seeing what can this mean? And does this mean that this person is talking to who? Because of this battle, bro, it gave a fresh breath to hip hop. It gave it its old meaning again into a new meaning for this next generation. I don't think that this next generation cared about lyrics at all. I don't think that the generation that grew up with the music that they had now, right? And there was a good point that somebody had made in this video. I think it was one of the interviewers. They said, if this is what it took, if this rap beef is what it took for people to get into lyrics again, then I'm not mad at it. No, I'm not mad at it either, bro. Um, There's a bunch of different reasons why I think we say that a lot of people are not into lyrics. Um. Believe it or not, I think a lot of young people, they they look at lyricism as different than with the way we look at lyricism. We look at lyricism as somebody that can, you know, tell stories within stories. They can hit you with double entendres. They can hit you with bars and they're fire, like certain things that they can say. And then when they do use metaphors and synonyms, it's like, oh, yeah, that was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. But it's much more deeper. I think a lot of uh, young people, they don't look at lyricism like that. They look at more straightforward rapping, how they feel and what they see and what's going on around them. The realer you can be in their eyes, that's how they feel like it's something magnificent to them. It's something great to them. If you can, if you can make them feel like how they feel in the streets, like, like how, uh, drill rap does to a lot of these 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 young dudes who who participate in that type of behavior yeah they like that you know what i'm saying because they feel like oh it's a oh i'm, I'm really out here uh with those sticks like you know what i'm saying i got that stick i got that stick i got that stick i got that stick i hit your bitch i hit your bitch i got that stick and it was like yeah that's crazy yeah i got that stick too and i hit your bitch you know what i'm saying that's, that's just how it is so a lot of them, a lot of young people, they look at, because lyrics are just lyrics. It's whatever you put down, that's the lyrics. But I think a lot of people, lyricism can be taken in different interpretations, but most people look at 
lyricism as being like Eminem, Royce the Five Nine, Black Thought, but lyrics is what you write down. So, but being a lyricist is somebody that is high at a high capacity of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, being a lyricist is like being a composer. You you can write some down, some things down, and, and compose some stuff. But when you are a composer, you up here like Yanni and all of them dudes, and you out of here. So I understand exactly what what he's saying though. It was a lot of soft ass music coming out for the better part of the years that have passed, bro. A lot of soft ass music. I, don't get me wrong. I like I like music that could make me feel good. I like music that's melodic. I like music that feels like you know it got it got a type of flow to it. It's having fun. I like having fun. The thing is, is that there's sometimes where you want to hear a song, bro. You want it to make you cry, or you want it to you want to feel like the pain, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? Like there's some times where you want to listen to a song and you want to listen to the pain in the artist. You want to listen to the struggle. You want to listen to like, man, you, they're rapping to keep the lights on or like they're rapping to, to, to pay the bills. Like they're doing all this shit just to stay alive. Like that's the type of music that I like realistically. I mean, I like having fun and I like listening to music like that. But at the end of the day, like, what can you bring to the table that will make people understand like, yo, this is something that like, this is something that needs to be heard. This is something that people will definitely connect to. And that's another thing too. I think that us as older people who listen to rap, we got to stop thinking that everybody has to like all the, the guys or the people that we think is great lyricists. Like a lot of people, a lot of people ain't going to like black thought. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people ain't going to like certain artists that are super lyrical. They're just not going to like it. Some people just, their brains are not wired that way. Their brains are more wired for simple, simplistic, simplicity, simplistic things. Not wired for people who speak deeply. And even though you want to hear and you want to say, yo, this is crazy, but the way, it, how it, how, how, um, the type of impression it puts on you, some people they're just not impressed by that. Like my cousin, my cousin, shout out to Rock, my cousin, he is a super lyricist, super lyricist. I mean, he's like one of the best I ever heard, and I'm talking like he's a street lyricist, not some. I mean, he can get to that that he can get to the to the to the Royce and Lupe and all them type if he wanted to, because he's that good with his pen. But mostly he's, he's street lyricist. And the thing about him is um, he don't really like lyrics. Uh, lyrics. He don't really like lyricists like that. He He's just as good as them. He just he don't like it. And that's kind of weird, but that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? So who knows? Some people, it just, it just, it just affects people differently. On a different level than just being at the club or being in the car, jamming out, like, no, play something that's going to make us gravitate towards you as an artist. And I think this was one of those moments where lyricism became appreciated. Lyricism came out as number one. Lyricism currently is the number one subgenre in hip hop currently. Conscious rap, however you want to put it, right now is number one. So anybody that's dropping like an album, like Lil Uzi and Cell 60K, there's a reason for that, bro. I mean, Lil Uzi is a great artist. I love Lil Uzi Vert. However, right now, what Lil Uzi Vert is doing experimentally, doing 50-50, is not what the people want, bro. At all. Somebody, somebody said this. In uh, me personally, but I'm not really a big fan of Lil Uzi Vert. I don't think he's, I don't know. I just don't think he's as good. But everybody go, you know, uh, Scribe to the bill. Yeah, I'm not really a big little Uzi Vert fan. I never really have been. I I never really been a big fan of his. I never really thought he was that great. I just, I, I look at him as a run on rapper, and I know y'all like, what does that mean? Like a person that just raps, just runs on with just lyrics, don't stop. Really, like, ain't no really no bars to me. It's nothing. Just. Just a, just like somebody threw a bunch of words at the wall and then try to put them, piece them together. 
That's how I look at Lil Uzi Vert. He's really not. I'm just not impressed by him at all. I don't care how people try to make it out to be. I think a lot of times we conflate. Um, we we kind of com- conflate popularity with when someone does something that's remotely close to okay. We overemphasize it as it being really good. Like for example, like uh. Your little Yachty when he rapped on the beat with J. Cole. And people looked at it as like, oh, he he's not the Yachty that we thought he was. He actually can rap. But people look at his type of lyrics and they say, oh, well, little Yachty did something that's halfway decent. They put that at the A-plus category or the A category. But Eminem or whoever is a super lyricist, Kendrick, Eminem, all those people up there, they have to stay at that A plus category. Because even if they do something that is ten times better than little Yachty, people are still gonna say it's not good enough. And that's how it goes with a lot of these, uh a lot of these these artists that I notice. You know what I'm saying? So but uh either way, um, shout out to Corday. He um pretty good artist. I think he's pretty good. And uh yeah, so uh early in the morning that's why i'm quiet just want to make sure everybody's all right so look make sure that y'all subscribe to the channel and all these other stuff all these other stuff all these other things and um yeah man i'll see y'all 12 o'clock show coming up and um yeah have a good day good morning <laughs>